Now, for more on China-Norway ties, I'm joined by Dan McClory, live from Irvine, California. He's president and head of China at Baustede Company. Welcome back to the show, Dan. Thanks, Rochelle. Now, with warmer diplomatic ties between China and Norway, both countries are expected to resume talks on a free trade pact. What sort of sectors could we see bilateral cooperation on? Well, just to give you a little quick background, though, on Norway, what comes to mind, Rochelle, when we think of this country is, you know, they're really tops in three areas. Number one, as we heard earlier in the show, um, they're a massive producer of seafood. So salmon is, is huge, something like 65% uh, uh, of the world supply comes from Norway. Two is they've been voted the happiest place on the earth, the happiest nation. That's kind of interesting. And three is they have one of the largest sovereign wealth funds in the world, around a trillion dollars. So with all of that as a backdrop, we don't want to underestimate this nation of just 5 million people. And I think, to your point, they're going to come together on a free trade agreement and possibly even some geopolitical agreement regarding the Arctic Council. Now, as you mentioned, we have seen Norway's ambitious plan to really raise its market share of salmon in China to around 65%, and that's coming from 5% this year. So how realistic is that? I don't think it's very realistic. Just to extrapolate, we have 65% of the, the world's market share, and we want to get that in China. There's a, there's a lot of runway, as they say, between uh, that actually happening. Um, but I do think right now Norway and China find themselves in an enviable position, which is in contrast to this trip to the United States for Mr. Xi. Um, we now have parties that really can put together, number one, a free trade agreement, but number two, some actual cooperation between those countries. And that's only going to bode well for increasing the amount of exports, but getting it up to 65% market share, not going to happen anytime soon. And speaking of President Xi's visits, we know that the Arctic was on the agenda during Solberg's visit to Beijing and Xi Jinping's visit to Finland. So what sort of cooperation can we expect when it comes to the energy and climate change when it comes with Norway? Well, again, this is where China, uh, in contrast to, say, the U.S. and other countries, is, is really continuing to be the responsible adult on the world stage. And, of course, Norway has been very forward-thinking and looking about climate change uh, and about these various accords. So I think they're, 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 they're like-minded at the present time, and I think they will come together. Um, I think as it relates to the Arctic, China would like to be an observer to the Arctic Council which would give them some visibility to what's going to go on from a governance and possibly even a security standpoint. Uh, and, and as they have good relations between the two countries, that type of status may in fact be possible. Now, with those good relations, we saw that President Xi also highlighted that, highlighted that Norway was one of the first countries to recognize China as having market economy status. Why do you think that might be significant? Well, clearly, it, it um, underscores the will of the Norwegian people, which is to do business with China uh, and to not get caught up in maybe some of the other uh, rhetoric and politics that have existed. Uh, you know, I had, a, I had a great example today of this, Rochelle. I was speaking to the Chinese chairwoman uh, of a Norwegian company, uh, and it's called BioVac Environmental Technologies. Um, this is a Shenzhen-listed company in China that acquired a Norwegian company because they're especially good in soil remediation technologies, which can be brought back to China. Another example of, of, of clean environmental and agricultural oriented technology that these two countries can come together over if they're just given the chance to cooperate. So then perhaps in terms of potential other areas that they may go into, you mentioned the issue of energy, but what other opportunities could there be for economic cooperation? Well, marine and maritime come to mind almost immediately. Um, agriculture would be another example that we could think of. And there's, there's also a strong technology component. But, you know, going back to my example of the Chinese-owned Norwegian company, one thing that they've seen is the character of the people in Norway. They call them Viking-like, strong work ethic, very dedicated. Uh, and I think that only bodes well for an increased and a deeper relationship between the two countries. And just quickly, in terms of the potential for economic challenges, what stands out to you? Well, you know, we're, when, when we say economic challenges, there's got to be some way for this massive amount of supply that Norway has in seafood and salmon to find its way into China. It's high quality. Right now, there's a, there's a price differential, like we heard in, in the open uh, from one of your colleagues. So that somehow has to normalize. But I can tell you what's not going to get in the way, Rochelle, the, the willingness to put together a free trade agreement. Norway and China are years ahead 
of many other countries, the United States among them, that would like to have such an accord. So there's, there is definite willingness. I think there has to be a little bit more uh, stabilization and, and a little bit more equality on the pricing front, and that would really open up the trade with the seafood market. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much, as always. Dan McClory, President and Head of China yeah. at Balsett & Company.